Hello everybody, welcome to the second video of Moby Duck's Quest video series. Uh, this is the series where we explain and show you how you can build your very own crypto trading platform from scratch. And the topic of today's video is um, the question why every PTO-based exchange needs GraphQL. Alright, so in order to understand why you need GraphQL, you need to first know what is GraphQL altogether. Well, GraphQL provides a complete and understandable description of the data in your API. It gives clients the power to ask for exactly what they need and nothing more. Uh, it is basically um, used as an API wrapper, in our case, uh, a very handy API wrapper uh, that gives you the power to request only the data that you need uh, for a particular screen. Uh, apart from that, it is also able to combine different requests into one. For example, um, you can see on the screen here is the regular PCO API for markets, for example. It's returning this much data where you just have in your ID, your name, your base unit, quote unit, and so on. However, on the second uh, half of the screen, this is the screenshot from our GraphQL API, and it can return you a lot more. Uh, Apart from just, you know, the ID, the name and so on, you can also uh, just get the whole base unit. So that's like two different regular APIs combined, but you can um, put them into one request using our GraphQL API. So by this, you are reducing the number of requests and you can actually get everything from one request. For example, a very simple task you, you, want, you would want to do uh, is... Um, you want to get your markets and you want to also display uh, within the markets the icons for every currency that is in that market. Using the regular API, you would request markets first, then request currencies, then match your base and quote unit with currencies, then get the icon URL from the second uh, currency request and then you can display all of that. Using GraphQL, you can do that in one go. You just create one request and you get everything you need. You can get the icon URL and you can get a lot more uh, from that specific currency. So in that way, this is very neat and very handy. Apart from that, GraphQL has a very advanced caching system. So um, it doesn't always um, ask your servers to get the data from. So for example, if you requested markets once and they are not the subject that frequently changes, the markets, your markets can be added within, you know, uh, weeks or even months. So there is no point to constantly querying the API. Um, and so uh, GraphQL in that sense, it uh, has a caching system so that it reduces the load on the servers. And for simple public requests like this that don't need to be called every time, uh, it can just be, you know, um, returned from cash. So that's very nice and very handy. And let's move forward and see what other features GraphQL offers. So uh, GraphQL has three type of um, requests you can do. Uh, it has its own names for those. So I will explain them right now. The first one is query. So query is basically your analogy to HTTP get request, uh, which is uh, everyone is familiar with. You just get the data from the server. You're not putting anything in, onto the database or you're not uh, changing anything. You're just getting whatever is already present there. The second one is the mutation. Mutation is uh, your analogy to HTTP post request. The post request is where you change stuff is where you add new records to the database or where you log in or uh, in submit a withdrawal or something like that. And the third one being subscription. Subscription is GraphQL bulletproof WebSocket implementation. It's actually built-in box implementation of a WebSocket uh, that is proven for years. Um, and it's working very neatly together with RabbitMQ. Um, this is a subject that I will talk about in a further tutorials where we will discover the whole architecture of OpenDAX. Uh, but it basically works out of the box with RabbitMQ and posts any new messages that are coming from the RabbitMQ to the WebSocket. 
Uh, those being like uh, order is updated or uh, order book is updated or K line um, is updated, your candlesticks are changing or recent trades and so on. Any real time updates, subscription is um, responsible for those. Uh, yeah, so those are the features basically. And here I have also a diagram of uh, that shows how that GraphQL fits in the current. Uh, uh, architecture of, of OpenDAX. So uh, we have traffic. Traffic is um, where the uh, is our proxy that routes uh, any requests. Uh, then we have three front ends, uh, which is base up and tower um, and MobyDAX, uh, which is not a front end by itself, at least not at this stage yet. We're still developing our MobyDAX web. I'll show you a sneak peek of that um, at the end of the tutorial. So um, uh, stay motivated, you know, to go along. Uh, but um, uh, after that, we have Envoy, uh, which is our API gateway. And we also have GraphQL. And GraphQL works uh, uh, directly with PCO or Barong. Um, uh, uh, and it also connect is connected to RabbitMQ. So you have both of worlds, you have both the API uh, from PCO Barong or AppLogic if you have that one and you also have the WebSocket uh, from the RabbitMQ. So PCO would post uh, a new event, for example, an order was created to RabbitMQ, GraphQL will consume it and send that message to the WebSocket where MobyDux would see that there was a new order created. So that is very nice. Uh, having this uh, uh, infrastructure, you, we don't need um, another WebSocket provider like Ranger or uh, the new provider Rango. Um, we can just go with GraphQL, which is very nice. Uh, so that's basically it for how it fits in there. Um, to really understand the power of GraphQL and why it's needed and essential, uh, I want to show you a little the, um, demonstration. Um, so let's uh, go right in. So here you have your typical GraphQL playground. And why is this nice? Well, let's just go back for a second uh, to the this previous slide. So uh, you probably all are familiar with components that come together with OpenDAX, which is PCO and Barong and possibly AppLogic. So those are three different repositories, three different applications, and each single application has its own API. And that API is unique, the endpoints are unique, they are constantly developing, the endpoints are constantly changing, the documentation is specific to each application you have to go to the repository search for the docs check what type of data you should give to this one what type of data you should give to this application how do you basically authenticate how do you get that cookie uh, what request is that and then it changed with a different version and so on so finding that in multiple places uh, trying to figure out the documentation in also various places for various components. And uh, sometimes it's hard to understand how they could in incorporate together or what type of um, API you need to call and so on. Uh, and that where GraphQL has uh, the best power. That's like from my personal experience, uh, which is, which was phenomenal. Like developing front end using GraphQL for me was like, eye-opening. Um, this is true honesty. Uh, why? Uh, the whole power is here. Basically, this is the power of GraphQL. Why? Because you have this docs um, tab where you can see every single query. So that's your get request, every single mutation. So that's your post request and every single subscription that is available to you. So you don't need to do you don't need to do anything uh, to search for the dogs or whatever. You don't need to do that stuff. Uh, you can just open this and you already know. You already know that you can get a currency, that you can get ID, deposit and so on for that specific currency. You can get the options 
for the ERC20. Or we want to, I don't know, let's see, user orders, for example. You already know what structure it is. Uh, you already know what you need to provide, like the arguments. Uh, you need the Barong session, for example, um, in order to get your orders. You need a market, uh, a state for filtering purposes and so on. So you already know what you have to give in the input and you already know what you will get on the output. And uh, needless to say that you can try this stuff out. Like, um, it's easy as that. What you do is you go to login, for example. Uh, there is an already mutation I've used. You log in, you press, there you go, you send the request. No need for postman, no need for curl, no need for any other stuff to test the request and to understand what you get out of it. You just play with the play playground. You make a request, you get your broken session on the, uh, on the output, you, your UID. We can also get more stuff out of this, I'm pretty sure. And the handy part of it is once you start typing, see, it already, it already gives you some hints, like, Hints what you can do. You can do color role. You can go profile. Profile is a bigger one. So you can have last name. You can have first name. You can have an of country, postcode, city. So with just making a login, you can have so much information already about the user that just logged in. So on your front end, you could be sending this one login request and already showing users some pop-up like hello mark from uh, united states because you can already get that you don't need to send another request to get the profile you already have all that in one uh in one request so yeah see we can uh, we also got the role profile for this uh, particular user is null because um, it hasn't completed uh, completed the kyc process yet um, right so there you there you have it that's as nice as it is but that's just the login let's check out some other stuff so this was the mutation uh as i've already said this is your typical post request so you have to give something in and you get something out and something is created on the database now let's check out the get request for example we can do that for balances let's say uh so let's see what uh, is the current balance for this one uh, so we provide also a session because um, the server has to know who is authenticating and you can see that we can get the balance and just as that we can also have multiple stuff here we can have icon URL we can have deposit fee deposit enabled we can have whatever is possible humanly possible on and existing on the database you can request that using the GraphQL and you can see here you just test it out and there you have it. You already, you can already test it like it's pure hands-on. You get the API, you have your documentation in place, you just request the server, you already know what you get uh, in the output, and you start your development for the front end. Easy as that. You don't need to ping developers or DevOps or any other guys. They just set up this for you. You already have everything, you already know the input, the output, you structure your front end and you begin the development. Um, that's the power of it. That's the power and the beauty of it. And apart from that, we also have the WebSocket. I haven't shown them yet. This is, for example, a pub your typical public WebSocket for uh, your order book or your WebSocket for your K line. You can see here y y we get the messages every sort of second. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's like that. Um, we will uh, keep the links in the description down below so you can go and have a look of the, for the GraphQL yourself and have a feel of it. And later on in the videos we are planning so that anyone who's interested to have their own OpenDocs set up and their own GraphQL deployed, uh, they will be able to reach out to us and we will provide you the deployment so that you can play with it on your own field and uh, maybe start some custom development. And in this series, we will actually do start, uh, we will actually start that custom development and I will show you how you can develop with uh, GraphQL, how fast and easy that is. Uh, for now though, uh, just what I've um, 
promised you I will show you a little demonstration of what we've been working on for Mobidux Web. And just a reminder, Mobidux Web is um, built on Flutter using this GraphQL that I've just shown you right here. So let's go right here. So there it is, a um, little demonstration of what we have going on uh, with our Mobidux Web. Uh, there you have your typical markets where you can select the market that you want at the current state. Here is the selector uh, for the K-line period. Here you can select your trades or whether you want to see all the market trades. Uh, right here are your open orders. You can cancel them on or like one by one. Let's see it in action. You can see just right here order book is um, getting less orders because I'm canceling my own orders. So let's cancel one more just to demonstrate. Uh, all right. And another one for that particular price point. And here is your um, actual um, order form where you can post an order. So let's have another order uh, in place. Uh, so let's say we want to sell for 200 and we want to sell one. Let's sell that. So order is created. You can see them right here and you can see how instant this is. Like literally, let's just appreciate that. So uh, let's say 220 and 0 0.1. I hit sell and you can see it's right there and right here in the order book. Fast, very fast and very efficient which I really do like. We don't have any trading bots running on this server, so that's why you're not seeing any Kline changes. And another cool feature that we have, and I really do like that one as well, is that you can buy the orders right from the order book. So just easy as that. You click on the order, you click sell, and you just bought that order that was present on their order book. So very nice. And there you have it, also Kline had just appeared. Um, this is a little demonstration, it's still internal because we're still doing some testing, but we were expecting this to become public quite soon. So you will be able to experience for yourself how this whole stuff works. Uh, but as of now, there you have it guys. Now you know what GraphQL is and why it is essential for any PCO based deployment and why it will make the life of front end developer a blessing and the development will be as smooth as butter. So. That's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more and see you very soon.